I'm back. I have coffee and I need to record a new Patreon commercial because you probably don't want to watch it again. So for now, help Dark Slayer feed his family by supporting his Patreon. So I got some feedback about Horror Game from Scratch that I actually agree wholeheartedly with. I was just trying to throw things at the wall that, you know, are generic ideas that people might want to learn. Doors, keys, flashlights. But then we jumped right into AI, which I guess actually scared some people away. While I do do my best to explain so beginners can get it, I could absolutely see where they're like already AI and then they're just like, well, hold on. So we're going to go ahead and put a halt on AI, which is fine because you guys already have an amazing basis to get your AI going. And instead, we're going to work on throwing items as well as placing items. Full disclosure, I know how to place an item, I know how to throw an item. I don't know how to do the preview. You know how like you'll, you'll go to put an item down and then you get like that grid of the item and then you can kind of rotate it and place it. I don't really know how to do that because I've never done it before, but I can tell you, I can conceptualize it. Basically, all you're going to do is align trace forward, make the material that grid that's like see through actually place the actor and have it follow the line trace as you move the camera around. You might be thinking, well, you if you just told me how to do it, then why can't you make a tutorial on it? Well, because I appreciate quality and unless I know what the heck I'm talking about, I'm not going to sit here and make a tutorial on it and I've never done it. Anyway, let's work on throwing our item. So let's go ahead and first let's look at our first person character because I want to see how I added the flashlight. I believe we just have a yep child actor item connected to the spring arm. All right. So what we need to do is let's go back to first person. We're going to go into our inputs. We're going to go to our actions and we're going to create a new action. I'm going to go to input input action. We're going to call this I a underscore throw like that control shift S to save all and we're going to open up throw once it's open. Let's go ahead and go to the triggers. We're going to go ahead and hit plus and plus. We're going to go ahead and do pressed and we're going to do one for actually, you know, we don't even need release. Just do pressed. We literally only care on pressed. If you ended up making two, this little carrot on the right, you can go to delete. Save back in first person character. I'm going to show you guys something that I've started doing to continue to organize my projects. I didn't know if you know, I didn't know if you guys knew you could do this on the left hand side under graphs. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit plus and I'm going to make this the input graph. I'm going to go back to the event graph. Everything here is input related. As you can see, we've got shoot, which is what I used, by the way. I remember this is like how I turn my flashlight on and off. Yours is probably something else, but I'm going to take all of the input stuff and I'm going to hit control X to cut it and I'm going to put it on a input specific graph. Control shift S compile. Also, I'm going to fix an, a mistake. One, I'm going to rename this from shoot and two, we're going to get this commented. All right, I renamed it to use item and I got a nice little comment around it and throw is going to be input related. So we're going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to type in I a for input action. We're going to do an underscore. Oh, that's IQ I a underscore. And then we will do uh, throw, which is the new thing. Remember, you don't want the value. You want the event. And instead of putting all the logic right here, this is going to be a good time to just go ahead and create a function. So on the left hand side, I'm going to hit plus on the functions and I'm going to call this throw item request. We're going to hit control shift S. So throw item request is going to take a look and see if child actor item is set. So we're going to take C a item. We're going to get the child actor because if you remember uh, child actors are really strange. Let's go back to the input graph and you'll remember even to talk to it, we had to go from child actor item to get child actor. Uh. We're going to run an is valid. So what this is going to do is it's going to grab our child actor and say, hey, is this currently valid? And what that means is it says, is it set? Because if it's not set, we're going to get a is not valid. And if it is set, we'll get an is valid. So because I foresee debugging being an issue and you should do this anyway, out of is not valid, we're going to do a print string and then we're going to right click. We're going to type in format text and in the format, we're going to type in child actor is not 
valid in, and then we're gonna do a curly bracket, actor, curly bracket, and press enter. Then for actor, we're just gonna pull out and do self like that. And then we can take the results, plug that in. We will get a conversion, but that's fine. Grab it all, press Q so it's nice and straight. What this is gonna do is basically it's gonna say child actor is not valid in, and then it's going to give the actor a uh, name. So you'll know which item in particular is throwing the air. Uh, so to be crystal clear, I named this actor. It doesn't have to be actor. I, I could make this potato. I just named it actor so it was specific, but now I'm realizing it's confusing. So we're gonna say child actor is not, not valid in potato, and you can still plug this in, it's fine. However, if it is valid, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is we're gonna take the child actor and we're going to get actor transform, okay? Now, it's important to get transform here and not specifically the location because we need to know its direction, its scale, everything. We're gonna mimic it to a T. Sorry, I am messing my lines all up. So if it is valid, we're gonna go ahead and get the actor transform. And what we're gonna do, we're also gonna do is get its class. Cause we're about to do some crazy stuff. So out of is valid, you're going to spawn actor from class. Now check this out. We are going to spawn the class that it currently is at the exact location that it currently is. However, now we need to go make an interface. And I'm gonna do this in my interaction interface because to me this basically is an interaction because something you need to know about game development or like a good way to think about things is anytime something happens to something, it does it to itself at the request of something else. I know that sounded crazy, but think about it. The player controller requests that the pawn moves. The pawn then uses its own logic to move. If you had a pickaxe and you swung and you hit an ore vein, the pickaxe would notify the ore to reduce its own health. Or it would notify the ore vein that, hey, you need to break, in which case the ore vein would break itself. It's a little confusing, but in order to throw the object, we need to tell it to throw itself, basically. So I'm gonna go into my interfaces. We're gonna go into my interaction interface, and I'm gonna create a new one. A uh, new function, it's gonna be BPI underscore throw request. And we're gonna hit compile and save. However, what I wanna do here is include a vector. So we're gonna do forward vector. And I will explain why in a moment it's going to be a vector. We're gonna hit compile and save. And go back to first person character. And what you're gonna see is with the return value, we are going to send it the message of BPI throw request, and we need to include a forward vector. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my first person camera. We're gonna go ahead and get forward vector like that. And we are going to pass that to whatever we're throwing because it's gonna use that information. So we now have a function that will try to do a throw request, but there's one more thing I need to do. We're actually gonna get child actor item and we're gonna set the uh, default value to null. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set child actor class like this and just set it to null because we just threw it. We don't need it in our hand. So if I'm not mistaken, it's been a minute since we made it. Yeah, it's just a flashlight with a cylinder. So this should work. However, we do need to go to the flashlight because, which by the way, if you're watching my inventory system, uh, videos, which you should be. But if you're not, um, this is a good time to have a parent to child relationship because if we had a parent tool item and not just specifically a flashlight on the parent item, we could teach it how to react to throws. Therefore, all items already know how to react to throws. But because I only have the flashlight and I don't have a parent item, I'm gonna have to do it per item unless I decide to switch to a parent item. If that doesn't make sense, I highly recommend you watch my uh, Uncovering Inventory series. But anyway, uh, in our interfaces, we should now have access to, we have the use request. Uh, did I, wait, did I, hold on, interfaces. I made one for items and interaction. This is what happens when I make videos like weeks apart. These should basically just be the same thing, but it's not that big a deal, so I'll just go to items and remake my function. EPI underscore. You know what? No, I'm fixing it. 
If you want to fix it too, it's fine. Just go to it, hit delete. It's gonna be like, oh, there's so many things. Just force delete, it's fine. And then now in your interaction interface, we're just gonna go ahead and hit add function, BPI underscore, use item, file and save. Go to first person character. Um, we need to go to where I'm using the item on the input graph. Uh, so right here, you'll see it's invalid now because we deleted that. And instead, we're gonna pull out and do BPI use item like that. Uh, not on triggered, but started. Pile and save. Now we'll head back to our flashlight and we'll go to class settings, implemented interfaces, BPI, interaction, pile and save, and then get rid of use request one because that no longer exists. And instead we're gonna use use item. And there we go. Yeah, that should have been the same from the beginning. I apologize. So anyway, we got BPI throw request now. So let's go ahead and use the throw request. And now what we're going to do is we are going to take our static mesh. We're going to do add force like that. Plug that in. And now because we have access to our forward vector, we can pull out. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it. So basically what's happening here is we're gonna use the forward vector and then multiply it by a number. And that number is gonna be how strong it'll be, whereas the forward vector, the original number is the direction. So uh, on the bottom here, we are gonna right click, right click on the actual node. I am going to change it to float single precision. And we'll just multiply it by like a thousand. I have no clue. I, I'm not used to throwing items. This might go flying and we'll plug that into the force. Don't worry about the bone name. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to our first person character, which by the way, uh, between this cut and the last cut, I realized we never set throw to a mapping. So make sure you did add this to your uh, input mapping context. Add throw and whatever button, I just use Q. And out of our throw event on the first person character, we are going to do a throw item request specifically on started. And let's hit compile and save, and let's give it a shot. Whoa. Ah. So the reason this is happening is because the cylinder has no physics. So you'll see that we have simulate physics disabled. Now, the reason we have it disabled is because it's being held in our hand. So I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but what I like to do with items that are being held is by default, I just have physics turned off. This makes it easier for me. And then I turn them on if they need to be turned on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to BP flashlight. And before we do the force adding, we're gonna get a reference to SM flashlight. We're going to set simulate physics to true. Move my boxes around a little bit. And now we shouldn't have an issue. Let's see. Three, two, one, blast off. It doesn't have collision. Yeah, it's because in the flashlight, because we're holding it, we're making it ignore all. So not only do we need to set simulate physics, we also unfortunately are going to have to change its collision, but that's okay. It's more to learn how to do and more to, to see some debugging. On the SM flashlight, let's go ahead and pull out. We're gonna set collision response to all channels go ahead and plug this in and we are going to make it block all channels because that's like the default for static meshes plug that in now we should be good let's see if, if it doesn't throw we have a small error but cute okay at least it's here and it looked like it might have jumped forward slightly does that mean we need a higher value i have no idea what if we set this to like 5,000? It might have jumped forward because it was colliding with our collision and not because of the force we're applying. Let's try. Oh, cute. I can't tell. It doesn't really seem to be doing much of anything. I'm gonna do something crazy. Don't do this. Just let me do it and so your computer doesn't crash. Cute. It's working. All right, we just need a higher value. Holy crap, okay. 10,000. I'm gonna try 10. Thousand. Cute. 
By the way, just so you know, frame rate does matter when it comes to physics. And I'm running at 30 because I'm also recording. I'm gonna bump it up. Let's go to frame, use fixed frame rate. I'm gonna go to 60 and watch. Notice you'll notice a difference in the objects like ability to be thrown. Watch. Q. See how it went a little bit further? So full on warning, frame rate is unfortunately tied to your physics. Not in the case of like Skyrim, if you know what I'm talking about, but the way you fix that is called is through micro steps. Uh, step. Oh, sub stepping. That's what it is. Uh, if you if you don't know what this is, okay. Basically, a sub step is a step between frames. So you do sub stepping to get physics to be even more accurate. I'm not the guy to go to for that. I'm sure there is someone much smarter than me that has already covered it. Maybe later, not now. Anyway, let's bring this to 100,000. Why does it need such a force? I'm confused by that, actually. Q. Oh, there we go. Check it out. Oh, my God. It worked. And then, obviously, we would need to make this like an interactable item where we can pick it back up, because right now it's not. But you know how to do that already if you've been watching the series. So that's how you throw items. And you learn an important lesson about the ideology of game design, and that is when something happens to something, it's because something else told it to. So, for example, I don't throw the flashlight. I tell the flashlight, hey, throw yourself, and then it gets thrown. And for anyone questioning why did I do it this way, because remember, we did something kind of weird. We copied its transformant class and then spawned one and then threw it instead of just throwing the one in our hand. The reason I did this is because this is my preferred method. You could technically spawn an actor and then immediately like make it a child of your spring arm, but I don't like that. I like to just set this to null so it goes away. And then if I wanna add something to my hand, I just pass the class over and set it to the spot that's already designated for it. I hope that makes sense. That's all for this episode. When we come back, we are going to set items. We're gonna take an item that has a use, like a proximity to it, and we're gonna take it from our hand, we're gonna place it on the ground, and then give it a little bit of functionality, so it's kind of like a phasmophobia tool. Again, remember your physics are tied to the frame rate. If you absolutely have to know, look up subsampling or sub-stepping, not sampling, sub-stepping. Like, comment, and subscribe. You guys are the absolute best. And I'll see you in the next one.